we're in Central City, Kentucky. Just been in the visitor center there where there's a little Every Brothers Museum and shown around by Wayne and uh, Eleni. Well worth yeah. the visit, lovely people. Um, lovely, really nice. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, really nice. Don Everly's car in the window there. This is what he drove around. It was a well-known little inn and restaurant right on the, the man-made uh, lake of Lake Malone. And he um, donated it to us. There's some, uh, what's interesting we think about it is that it has three windshield wipers. We think that's kind of cool that it's done, that it has three windshield oh, yeah. wipers. You don't see that very often. But uh, this is his little car he drove around. His dad and his mom and them, uh, you know, they started out as the Everly family singing. And then as the boys grew older and they knew they had a real talent, and it went to just the boys, you know. You've heard that, yes. Okay. Well, you hear some, some of it on the Roots album, isn't it? Some of it. Yes, some from of the, the information. Uh, mm -hmm. It is. We were, this was donated to us, this uh, old yes. <laughs> yeah, that's jukebox. True. And when we got it, we were just thrilled to have it for sight. But it actually works. And when we got it, it didn't work. And so come to find out, it was, um, all it needed was a 97 cent fuse. Oh, <laughs> and it works. So you can pick a song and play it. I think Wayne's, he must have picked one. But uh, Wake Up Little Susie, I mean, you know about all the songs. So they called and came up here. They actually donated the radio and got the whole system, not just a little bit, the whole new system for the police department. Well, as a gratitude, we said, well, can we do a parade with you? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do a concert. Oh, okay, free, you know, everything free. So that started the homecomings. All the t-shirts from the, the concert, one of the gentlemen, he took it and his mother actually made that quilt from all the t-shirts because there were hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, including my husband and myself, that would volunteer. We would buy tickets too, but we'd also volunteer all of our services for the weekend. That's cool. Statues of, they're being made right now, of the Everly Brothers and John Prine. And it's gonna be called Festival Square. Just a nice place for you to visit, relax, learn a little bit more. Nice. Just a, it's, it's an extension of this. Mm -hmm. So they took us round in there, to, uh, giving us information on the Everly, well as, as well as the Everly's on, the uh, guitar picker Merle Travis and John Prine who wrote the song Paradise which uh, we associate more as fans with the Everly Brothers than John Prine but John Prine was uh, the writer of the song um, as Don say, used to say that it, it might as well have been called Brownie uh, as far as he was concerned because the same sentiments in the song apply as in being uh, coal mining communities that no longer exist when the coal company, the Peabody Coal Mining Company, moved out of both towns. The town ceased, uh, ceased to exist. From Brownie to Iowa to Knoxville to Nashville to Hollywood to England and around the world, Don and Phil have taken the music of Kentucky as taught by their parents and now they're bringing it back home to Central City, August 25th, 1988. That was the start of the homecoming concerts that the Everleys did for the next 20 odd years, I believe, um, here in Central City, which they uh, always uh, regarded as home, although, of course, neither of them uh, were actually lived here. Their roots definitely were here. Don was born in Brownie, Kentucky, which no longer exists, and that it, it was about two miles or so over east of Central City. And of course, uh, Phil was born in Chicago, Illinois, when uh, the Everly family moved up not long after Don was born. Thumb picking legends down here Mose Rager, Ike Everly, Kennedy Jones. Kennedy Jones showed most Rager and Ike Everly, the thumb-picking style, and they they enhanced it further, and they in turn were instrumental in Merle Travis, the 
successful country music uh, artist in the 40s and early 50s who uh, popularised thumb picking nationally but it was Mose Rager and the Everly Brothers' father Ike Everly there who uh, really taught him There's John Prine and Jim Walker Jim Walker plays uh, flute apparently he's been on many films uh, soundtracks including Titanic and John Prine again like the Everly Brothers not not born here he was born in uh, Detroit I think she said or was it Chicago I can't remember now but uh, his family were from paradise and that uh, that's why he wrote the song well worth a visit well worth a detour it is a yeah. bit off the track of Nashville and Memphis. Works off donations as yeah. well, so make sure you put something in the box. So, well worth a visit, and uh, we've got a couple of other stops to make in this uh, area relating to the Everly Brothers. Um, there's a few, few places in this uh, region. There's a, a great Everly Brothers documentary was made in the 80s. It was on uh, part of the Arena documentary and BBC in the UK. Uh, it's on YouTube, it's a really good documentary and a lot of it is filmed around this area so I, I'm just going to go to a few spots um, relating to the uh, documentary that the Everly Brothers were visited during that uh, documentary the first one is uh, not far, a couple of blocks away from here so just come up the hill from down there and in the Everly Brothers do Arena documentary, they show their cousin, uh, their cousin Ted Everly, is the pastor of this church, Lighthouse Baptist Church. And when you come up to film it, uh, purely because in that documentary, it shows Phil Everly performing, uh, well, performing, uh, singing "Amazing Grace" uh, with other members of the extended Everly family here in this church so it's had a, had a little bit of modernization over the years by the look of it but the outside is basically the same church So, I wouldn't have gone out of the way to come here, but as it's just up the road from the Central City Visitor Centre, why not? So, Phil Everly's here, this is, uh, is it Rosewood? It's either Rosewood or Rose Hill Cemetery, this is. Um, just on just on Everly Brothers Boulevard. And so, Phil's here and Father Ike is here. Ike Everly's, uh, Ike Everly died October 22nd, 1975, that was during the 10 year separation the Everly brothers had and it was reportedly the only time during that 10 years that the Everly brothers got together and actually spoke, was at Father Ike's funeral. So this is the family plot, um, the Everly brothers Mother Margaret, who died in December 21, was actually buried down in Woodlawn Cemetery in Nashville. Uh, and Don Everly seems to be a, a, a bit of a well kept secret at the moment what uh, where his final resting place will be. Ike Everly, of course, is from this area. Um, Although he was actually born in Iowa as well, he, at a very young age he moved here to the Brownie area. Um, he was down the mines at 13, Ike Everly. Uh, befriended Moose Rager and the, between the two of them they were taught the thumb picking style by one Kennedy Jones who had, himself had been taught it by black uh, singer Arnold Schultz, so a black guitar player. Um, but anyway, Phil was born in uh, Chicago. Don was born in Brownie but uh, the f was only a baby when the family moved to Chicago so 
neither of them grew up in this area but they definitely had their roots here and this it's interesting the song green river um on the the 1972 album stories we could tell that don and phil wrote they talk uh, the song green river which is a few miles over east of this point here but uh, green river is the predominant river of this area and it, in the song they say uh, green river you're still my home why did i roam green river someday i'll come home to stay and certainly with phil it looks like that came true what what's that there oh somebody's placed the stone there's a let it be me, is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anybody else here. As I said, this this is a, a family plot by the look of it, Everly's. I mean, there's a lot of Everly's. A lot of Everly's in this surrounding areas, but uh, there's no nobody else is named here, I don't think, are they? Who's, these are all... No, they're all Morris belonging to that one. There's, a, there's no other stones here. Yeah, yeah, this one here is Mary E. Everly. I'm not sure if, if that was Don's daughter. Um, obviously didn't survive. But it's the only it's the only other stone that's here Phil and Ike are in that side and this one's the the only stone this side. So just stop here a second, just come down from the cemetery, just up there on the left, Rose Hill Cemetery, where Phil and Ike Evely are. Um and it said Dom was born in Brownie, Kentucky, uh, which no longer exists. We'll just off Everly Brothers Boulevard. This is Everly Brothers Boulevard, this main road that goes on there. You've got a little road coming off. Yeah, this this road here is Old Brownie Road and it heads off in that direction. It, uh, looking at the Google Maps, it comes to a dead end uh, a few hundred yards up there. But this would have been the road that went from Central City to the small mining community of Brownie, Kentucky. It's, I think it would have been around two miles in that general direction. Another little point of interest is uh, that sign down there, Everly Auto Sales. Just pointing it out, it used to be Ted Everly, the Everly brother's cousin who was in the Featured quite prominently in the arena documentary about the brothers. Um, that was his comp That was his company. He's, he's di since died, but uh, I would have guessed that uh, it's still in the family. So this, we've come here, the city of Drakesborough. We've come here because uh, Mose Regal lived here. One of the big friend of Ike Avley, the Avley's father. And there's a fountain commemorating the four legends, uh, Kennedy Jones, Mos Moses Rega, Ike Avley and Merle Travis. Muhlenberg County, Kentucky is known around the world as the home of thumb picking, a style of guitar playing that is uh, that's characterised by use of the thumb to play bass and rhythm while the fingers play melody and harmony, resulting in an, in, in an impression that at least two guitarists are responsible for the sound that is created. The individuals that are credited with developing this unique style and ultimately passing it on to guitar pickers around the world have become known as the Four Legends. Those men are Kennedy Jones, Mose Reagan, Ike Evely and Will Travis. Yeah, so Kennedy Jones was shown it initially by a, a black guitar player, Arnold Schultz, and he in turn passed it on to Mose Rager and Ike Everly, who in turn passed it on to Merle Travis, who became 
the most successful commercially of uh, of the four. Most Rieger apparently wasn't too interested in be becoming a, a a star, shall we say, and lived here in uh, Drakesbred, the, the house through the trees there. It's um, in the arena documentary, the Everly Brothers come to visit Mose Rager at his home and he uh, shows them a bit of the guitar pick in there. So we've got the four guitars, one for each. And as it happens, the fountain is off today. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's been on for a while actually, does it? No. Although saying that in this heat it's not going to take long to dry out, it could have been on yesterday and I if they, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a shame the fountain's not on but there we are, Candy Jones and Mill Travis and there's a, a little memorial for Mose Rega here in front of his home, his former home. A unique personality and legendary country music thumbpicker who was known as Kentucky's shy guitar master. He was a country music pioneer and legendary musician in his own right who enjoyed every day being himself. Mill Travis once said of Moe's, we're all imitations of the greatest. Erected in 1992. Yeah, that's the house being there and you can see Don and Phil pull up on this Little street here, Guitar Avenue, and they get out to walk up the little bank there up to the house, and then they're uh, talking with Moe Schrager inside the house. So, about Ike Gavely there, it says he was one of ten children born in born in Muhlenberg County in 1908. I'm sure he wasn't, I'm sure. I'll have to check that. I'm sure I read that he was he was he, he was born in Iowa, but the farm his parents moved to Muhlenberg County when he was very very young. Like many other countyans at the time, Mike started working in the coal mines by the time he was 12 years old. Ike's father played fiddle, was likely among his earliest musical influences, and encouraged Ike to pursue a career in music. At around age 16 he got his first guitar. Ike Everly's guitar roots are much the same of those as those of his friend Mose Rager, learning the thumb-picking style of guitar playing from Kennedy Jones. Before the era of rock and roll, Ike, Charlie and Leonard, the original Everly brothers, thrilled audiences with their vocal and instrumental abilities, seeking opportunities in music and having a desire to leave a life of coal mining in Kentucky Ike moved his family to Shenandoah, Iowa in the late 1940s where he managed to get his own radio programme for him and his wife Margaret. Soon their sons Don and Phil would be a regular part of the Everly Family Act appearing on various television programmes including the Archie Campbell Show. The, tradi the traditional country style music performed by Ike during this period began to decline due to an upswing in rock and roll music for which his sons would rise to the top of the charts as the Everly Brothers. Ike died in Nashville in October 75 and is buried in Rose Hill Cemetery. Yeah. And Mose Rager, he was uh, born in Ohio, Ohio County, he lived all, ad all his adult life in Drakesborough from 1931 to his death. Oh, at age 40 Mose went to Cleeton to see the man that played chords up and down the neck of a guitar. Cleeton was a small town in between here and Central City. And he was in Cleeton, he met Kennedy Jones, the person he credits for teaching him the thumb and finger guitar method. And most Rager's buried alongside his wife, Laverda, in Ebenezer Cemetery. The same place that Merle Travis is buried. So yeah, brief little stop. There's a couple of signposts down the way here, just to uh, show us we're on the... More of an Every Brothers trail is the Every Brothers that... Uh, have initially brought us up on this detour into Kentucky. So here, up by the city of Drakesbury City Hall, this main road through is West Mosrega Boulevard, going uh, obviously past Mosrega's home there. And that street going up there is is named for Ike Everly, Ike Everly Avenue. Right, 
just come from Moseriga home behind us here. Yeah? Down to the main crossroads in Drakes, but just to point out we'll be turning right here you now back onto what's what is John Prime uh, John Prime Parkway, I think it's called, John Prime wrote Paradise that uh, he sang and of course the Every Brothers recorded. Um, I showed back up in Central City the old Brownie Road. Well the road going straight through these lights, straight on, eventually comes out in what was the town of Paradise. Brief stop here for two song references. I don't know if you can hear me above the noise of the water. But this is Green River that the Everly Brothers sang about in the on their album stories we could tell and also going back to the song Paradise again John Prime wrote and that I've got by the Everly Brothers the lyrics mention when I die let my ashes float down the green river let my soul roll on up to the Rochester Dam. I'll be halfway to heaven with paradise waiting, just five miles away from wherever I am. This is the Rochester Dam that is mentioned in the song. We, have, we haven't purposely come out of the way to stop here. It was just a happy accident when I was doing the route that I saw that the road passes right by this uh, lower end of uh, the Green River and the Rochester Dam. So from here we are head down to Knoxville where there's a couple more Every Brothers point of interest when uh, I'll perhaps tag on to this video or just make a, a new one. <laughs> 